So now we're, we're back to talking about risk. Risk is an assessment. Back by risk is an assessment backed by some evidence, I suppose, that of the the riskiness of a loan, the chance of default of a mortgage, and so on. So, for example, if I was as a university lecturer was a, was offered a mortgage in nineteen seventy or sort of pleaded with an institution, probably more likely nineteen seventy for a mortgage, um, they would assess you know, the type of job I had, how much I was paid per year, and so on. So. They, they would have lots of evidence. I mean, this is a bit like insurance. They have lots of accurate aerial evidence. But it would indicate that people like me who are, who are employed as lecturers in universities tend to have long-term jobs. They tend not to get sacked. Um, so they tend to be low risk. So that would, would assume things like the probability of me defaulting the mortgage was very, very low. You know, maybe one of those numbers like 5%. I mean, as... As I have indicated previously, if it was a musician who was earning lots of money this year, asked for the same level of mortgage as a university lecturer did, the risk of default would probably be very much higher because, and this is where that other notion of uncertainty perhaps comes in, because the lending institution, the bank or the building society, would have great difficulty in working out whether in 10 years' time there was sufficient income to pay to pay the repayments for the mortgage and so on. So for different occupations would have different degree of risk. So to try and explain the difference, which by the way is a big problem in almost all social sciences and and in almost all social sciences and particularly economics, um, the things we can't measure tend to be assumed away so let's I this seems like a nice a nice distinction to me that risk is measurable of uncertainty if we can measure something um, you know we, we for example of weather forecasts um, you can get weather forecasts right anywhere which says the risk of rain next week tomorrow the next day is is I don't know 50% or something let's say and that's that's built on a probability model because the forecasters, the weather forecasters know that given the climate, given the location, given the type of the type of weather we have, the chance of rain in this particular location is let's say fifty percent. Now but there's other things that can happen in the future we simply don't have no idea at all about. For example, if you went back even two years there'll be no prediction about COVID-19. If you're forecasting any economic activity or weather forecast or anything else two years ago, um, the chances of thinking of something like a pandemic, pandemic happening would be so small, it'd be negligible and ignored. So the pandemic would be something that's creates an uncertainty. We simply do not know when these things might happen. Um, this is, by the way, is slightly different from saying we we don't know that they will never happen. Uh, for example, in pandemics, uh, you know, it's we could argue quite convincingly that pandemics happen every so often. So it's very likely that the globe will have another pandemic. However, we we have absolutely no way of predicting when the pandemic might happen. And by and large, I mean, I suppose really this is part of the human condition. If we can't determine when things happen, we tend to assume they won't happen in like at any time it's going to affect us, so to speak. You know, that, for example, you know, we all understand that in some way a, me a meteor might, might strike the earth and all human life might be extinguished. Uh, we, we don't expect this to happen while any of us are alive. You know, we, we think the chance of this happening are very, very small. But, I mean, it could happen tomorrow, for example. You know, now, when I'm, you know, doing this, doing this lecture, I'm assuming that students are going to look at this and also that on Thursday and Friday in the coming week, I will be doing one of the workshops. 
and Katrina was doing the other and Michael was doing the third. Now, lots of these things could, be, could not be true. I mean, it is possible, you know. I mean, I could die between now and Thursday when I'm doing, doing this workshop. Well, I hope not to, but it's possible. Um, but, you know, this seems unlikely, so I discount this. Um, it's possible, I don't know, the, the whole internet seizes up before Thursday, so, so you know, we won't be able to hold our workshops and classes on Thursday or Friday. I mean, that's, that's certain, possible, but it, again, the chance of it happening are very, very low. I mean, so the uncertainty would be very great. So we tend to carry on assuming that it's not going to happen. And that's the problem with uncertainty. Risk are things we can we can put some sort of a even subjective probability to. You know, I can can work out in a sort sort of subjective way, um, I don't know, what I'd be doing this time next week, for example. I mean, you know, my subjective analysis of what I'm doing this time next week might be wrong, but I can still say the chances are, you know, there's a high probability that at the same time this week I'll be doing a video lecture for item for week week eleven or something let's say I mean that might not happen but I can I I can I can ascribe a probability with some some degree of of rationality to that um you know I mean I might be struck by a bolt of lightning this time next week however I mean I have absolutely no idea um, how that could happen um, I assume that the probability of this happening is really really tiny so I'll just ignore it now to come back come back to more realistic things here looking at mortgages I mean that's one of the problem with mortgages they are long-term loans mortgages are very long-term loans as I've said before they're they usually last between 20 and 30 years. So, um, in most things we do in life, we tend to assume that the near future is very much like the present. And therefore, we can plan what we're doing because of that. You know, your students are going to remain students for three years and so on. That's And so you can plan what you're going to do for those three years and then you either go on for further study or get a job and so on. Now, None of that might actually be true. I mean, everybody in the dark recess of the mind understands that's the case. But the farther away you go, the more uncertain everything becomes. Um, for example, as a first-year student now, it's very unlikely you'd be prepared to say with any certainty what you're going to be doing in 40 years' time or 30 years' time. Um, you know, you can hope certain things will happen in 30 years' time be fairly well off you'll have a good job blah blah and so on and so forth but you can't be sure of any of this and the further away time gets the further in the future you go the less certain you are of anything and this is a central problem with mortgages they're long-term loans and to make guesses about what will happen in the future what's the state of the world going to be like in the future um how are you know Will we have good jobs? Can you afford to pay your mortgage repayments? That sort of stuff. Um, so all this has to do with uncertainty.